Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. And if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Nancy Hartsock on the line, and she is CEO and co-founder over at Aquaseca. Nancy, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. So uh, I know that as we're recording this, you're in the middle of the uh, of the Aqua Watch launch, and we will talk about that. I mean, you just closed a small round. You're going to be raising another round. I mean, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot to cover in this interview, and I'm excited to get into it. And just to get us started, so Nancy, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Nancy, what mission matters to you? Well, our mission at Aquaseca is to allow and bring to the commercial building market, uh, people that are doing smart buildings and really understand what go, what's going on, the water intelligence so that they're able to protect their assets, provide good services to their clients, and very importantly, reduce their operating costs through better management of water efficiency. Fantastic. And we will we'll, we'll definitely talk more about um, water efficiency, smart cities. Uh, we got a lot to cover on that one. And uh, and I know when we were doing the warm up in the pre-show, you were starting to tell me some of it. I'm like, no, Nancy, don't stop. Stop. I want to hear this when we're recording because because it's good stuff. So I'm excited to talk about that. Um, but let, let's just start with how you got on this path of, uh, of entrepreneurship. So like like how did you get started with all this? Well, this is my uh, my second own startup and uh, the third startup I've been part of. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've spent the, a large part of the, the last third of my life in the startup world. And I find it's it's exciting because what you're usually doing is trying to develop or apply a new technology uh, to provide a really, really strong benefit to a segment of the market. Uh, the last company I was affiliated with, which was a startup, was Soul Focus. We were in the solar industry. Uh, it was my first entree into clean tech, uh, and I fell in love with it. It was the first time my son thought I had a cool job, you know, after my 30 years of thinking I had cool jobs, because it was all about the environment. It was protecting resources, and and fell in love with that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my other co-founders and I, that's where we met. Uh, we spent almost a decade together. Uh, developing new technology and taking it into a very old conservative market of energy, uh, very challenging, but very rewarding. So when that path came to an end, we said, what do we do next? And we said, what's being ignored? And to us, water was being ignored. Wow. So the, the idea of entering the startup world, first off, there's a lot of people watching this. Some are, are seasoned executives like you were and decided to, you know, and, and, and they're thinking about entering the startup world. So, or maybe they're coming from big companies, maybe they're coming from mid-sized companies, but it's a whole new uh, thing to tackle. What kind of advice would you give to somebody if they're, you know, they're coming from those big companies and they're like, you know, Maybe I'm, I'm thinking about going the startup route and I'm thinking or I'm thinking about joining a startup route. I mean, you have a lot of experience. What kind of things would you tell them? Well, I, th I think the biggest challenge is realizing that you're going to go back to doing what you did a decade before. <laughs> and, and you're going to say, if only I had the resources or why am I doing this? I had people to do that. Right now it's you. And, uh, and and you got to accept that up front, right? You know, if you find yourself saying, "Woo, I wish I had a shipping clerk," you know, yeah, you're not going to have one. So, uh, so it's really a change mentality there, and, and and that's hard for some people. On the other hand, for a lot of people, it's it's invigorating, right? Because you're touching it all, you're doing it all, you're making it happen, and you're getting to build an enterprise from. Uh, in my opinion, in the most efficient way possible. You know, you're not doing it within an established infrastructure where you have these limitations. Uh, when I was in large companies, I used to uh, resent startups because, you know, we would do a product launch and we had to test it so much and make sure everything was perfect mm -hmm. because our whole company reputation was on the line. And these silly startups could go out there and make <laughs> great claims. And if they succeed, they're heroes. If they fail, they just go away and nobody knows they were there. Mm -hmm. But to me, I'm sitting there. I got to worry about all this stuff. Well, you know, it, it wasn't quite what I expected. You still have to worry about it. 
but to be able to have the whole thing, take it from start and build it the way that's efficient versus the way an organization runs, it, to me, it's just invigorating. Yeah, I, I completely get it. And, uh, and, and I'm laughing when you're talking at some of this, because I'm thinking about myself and you, when you talk about shipping clerk and I'm like, man, when we did our first book and we did this and that, and we start with printing and a box and I'm like, what am I doing shipping a book? But then I'm like, hey, I'm so happy somebody ordered a book. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to ship that book. You want me to handwrite that? Or do you want me to print out a label? What are we doing? Then yeah, we had to, sure had to figure that out, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they prefer you and not handwrite it, but that's just a guess. <laughs> You've seen my handwriting and yes, you're right. <laughs> so um, let's talk about uh, the smart cities and energy. You, you talked you talked a little bit about it um, in the beginning and, and how the, how your mission is aligned with this, uh, specifically also water efficiency. I mean, there's a lot of people watching, like these are buzzwords. So you, I, I personally, I mean, I do a lot of interviews, so I we talk about it on the show. But um, prior to doing this, I maybe I see the word smart cities in a headline in a newspaper. I think about something like that, or if it makes the news somehow, then it catches my eye. But I don't really know know what it's all about. So maybe give us a little bit of an overview. Uh, yes, and, and smart cities, smart buildings, you're right, they're buzzwords, uh, but there's meat behind those buzzwords. You know, if you don't mind, I like to take it back to what's, mm -hmm. what's happened in history, right? You know, if we go back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, there was a big demand on electricity, right? We now have all these electrical appliances. We've got big mm -hmm. data centers that are consuming megawatts of electricity. Uh, you know, there was only so much production. They believed the world had to invest billions to get a power plant. You know, so out of that, somebody came up with the idea that, geez, we probably should use our electricity wiser. Uh, and from that was born something like a $50 billion industry of energy efficiency, mm. right? And it's, it's services, it's equipment, it's technology, it's all those things. Well, and that is, was really the early part of smart cities, right? How do you use your resources better? And you do it by having more knowledge and more data. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really bringing that, uh, that digital transformation, if you will, which is, you know, reshaping the world every day to the world of buildings, but going beyond just energy and, and to water. Because if there's one resource in the world that's limited, and it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a rainforest or if you're in you know, California, uh, you know, or the desert, wherever it's still a limited resource and we have to use it better. Uh, but there really has been no emphasis on that because water has been cheap. Yeah. And, you know, the whole, the whole world of industry is driven by us, right? And, you know, the, the electrical side, the energy efficiency side came when energy rates started skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. and then they cared. It's what's starting to happen with water. We're on the nascent edge of it now, but it's the ability then for cities or buildings, uh, you know, as well as residences and people to have the knowledge, the, the intelligence about how they use water and where it's going in order to do it better. If you don't know those things, you simply can't do it better. And you know, my belief is because it has been too complicated to do it, and it, the price of the water has not been high enough historically to have the industry care. But we're now really on, on the point where both of those things can come together and we can expand the whole concept of smart cities and efficiency to include water and water efficiency and water distribution. Yeah, that no, that's great, and it, it's interesting. We it seems like uh, just uh, humans as a civilization, like we need a little pain, and the way we express our pain is in, is in our wallet, right? So if water costs us more, if we have to start thinking about it, then it seems like that's when people care. Uh, which uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because I'm thinking to myself, and I'm like, yeah, that that's that's pretty much how it works. We need a little bit of pain, don't we? Yeah, no, it's true. You know, and there's a part of the there's there's a part of the you know. Um, consumer world, there's a part of the business world that really understands that we can't do things today and tomorrow like we did them yesterday. Yeah. And there's then this whole world of utilities and infrastructure where understanding and appreciating it and adopting it has just moved at a snail's pace. I, I think snails are still pretty slow. You know, so that has to change, but you can't expect it to change if you don't give people solutions that make it one worth the cost of changing and two uh, easy to change. 
And I think that's the part that's really been missing from the water side of things. And I will say it's because water can be very, very complicated. So uh, speaking of solutions, uh, what kind of solutions are you really providing or problems are you solving over at Aqua Seca? Yeah, uh, so you know, we kind of, I kind of break this into to, to three or four categories. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, uh, you know, first place, we're focused on the commercial marketplace, not people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, our, our solutions could go in people's homes, but it is, there's been a lot of development in that area. There are some reasonable solutions there, uh, but the part of the market we believe that has the highest impact, but has been ignored are these commercial buildings, whether it's mm -hmm. office buildings or hospitals or educational centers or factories or data centers, but the commercial buildings. Uh, and, and what's happened is there's just been uh, solutions out there which are complicated, right? Yeah. Which make you shut down your building to install them, which provide limited coverage of the building. You might do one thing, but not everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they've been expensive, right? It goes back to the wallet. They've been expensive. You know, when we we took our mission on and we said, okay, how do we solve the problems? Well, the problems we were looking at, you know, was initially smart water use, right? Mm -hmm. How do we reduce our water use? Because we're going to have to. Um, so we were really looking at water analytics and water data. What became clear to us, it wasn't part of our mission when we started, was the fact that there's every year in the U.S. alone, there's over $10 billion worth of property damage done to buildings. Wow. By water leaks. Wow. And those water leaks might That's be significant. Yeah, it, it is a big number. And when I see a big number and say nobody's made a good solution, you know, big question mark, am I sure it's a big number? And the answer is yes. Uh, why haven't there been good solutions? Because we've been looking at it with a mm. legacy mindset, not a forward based mindset, not saying how do we take things like industrial IoT and data acquisition, how do we turn that into something? And I, I call it the three C's, cost, coverage, and convenience, right? Mm -hmm. The cost got to be right. You got to yeah. pro provide broad coverage, not just one capability lots. And two, it better be convenient because if it's complicated, if you have to shut down buildings to solve problems, it just doesn't work in a fast paced world. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so the, the problem area, uh, it includes leaks. So leaks, you know, cause property damage. And those leaks aren't always big ruptured pipes. Yeah. You know, they could be they could be pipes or fittings or that rupture. They could be pipes that freeze. They aren't always just pipes. It could be the equipment attached to it. So you've got filters in commercial buildings and you've got pumps. And if any of those malfunction, you can have leaks and never know it. Wow. And it can be just the wonders of your tenants, right? The tenants that leave things running and leave the building, right? Or yeah. the tenants that install a new fancy coffee maker on the 11th floor, you know, let's call it an attorney firm just to, to pick on attorneys. And it, it, it wasn't done right, right? So all of a sudden you've got problems. Um, and those problems, you know, with tall buildings get to be bigger and bigger problems. So one thing that water has in common is it goes from the top down. Uh, so the taller the buildings, you know, the bigger the issues. So you've got this whole issues around leaks uh, or leaks induced by human negligence. Uh, those things, that's what costs $10 billion a year in property damage then the building people have told me that it's four to six times that dollar value when you look at the interruption of operations, mm -hmm. right? And it sometimes have to move out. Leases can be broken. I mean, on these big problems, they cause well beyond just the, the property damage. And that's kind of the, the, I call it, that's the quick way to the bottom line, right? You can justify our solution based just on that, but that's not all it's about. In fact, that's just the start of what it's about. The real issues are how do you then understand what's happening with water flow throughout a building? You know, in a home, it's complicated, but you're doing it in 1,500 or 3,000 square feet. In a 100,000 square foot building, it's much, much more complicated and, oh, and yeah. knowing where these things happen. So, um, so our solution then is geared also to really, if you will, is using acoustics, listening to the water flow through the pipes, we're tracking where it's going through the building. So that means you know where Aubrey Drop goes. You can manage your costs because you know where you're using and where your consumption is, and you can compare it to other properties and you can say, whoa, this looks too high. You know, why aren't we doing this? So you've got this rich data set from which to do that. 
Uh, it also allows you to do things like bill backs. Uh, if you want to understand, you can identify where perhaps some tenants are using more than you would expect. Um, you can correlate uh, you know, HVAC usage and cooling towers with, uh, with tenant usage. Um, and, and very importantly, you can now start addressing and setting up sustainability goals. And you know, building uh, water use and sustainability in commercial buildings is a really big issue now. All of the large property management companies are concerned about it. And in a lot of parts of the, the world, it's mandated now. Right. You don't just to go carte blanc, use all the water you want. You know, this gives you the tools to do it. And then the last part of that, of the problem solved, and this is one that's been around a long time, but after buildings were closed for COVID and reopened, it really gained a lot of uh, attention, which is water that stays stagnant in pipes causes very serious health concerns. Uh, so, you know, so what buildings do is they have to flush all of these lines. What does that do? Well, I waste a whole bunch more water and time. Uh, so this, with the same solution, you're able to also detect if water hasn't moved, you know? So it's moving where it shouldn't move. It's moving and you know where it's moving or it's not moving and that's bad, you know? But with one simple solution, you get that. And, and that's why we sometimes call it a digital transformation, right? Because once you can convert what's happening with water to a digital footprint, you can very easily understand everything that's happening and, and analyze it every way you need to, to really be efficient, right? Um, and you can do it at a low cost, and which has been a big barrier in the past. Oh man, so, so that's great. So Nancy, um, tell, let's talk a little bit more about the, your plans for expansion. So what, what's the plan for this rollout? Yeah, well, you know, for the rollout itself, of course, it's, you know, we're, we're ready to go and we're going to do it. But what's kind of, well, it's very exciting about this product concept, and I can contrast to that to others that I've done, especially as startups, is that this is actually a platform that continues to grow. It's not a product SKU. Uh, it's, a, it's a capability platform. So once our customers have their systems installed, which is basically these sensors and gateways, once they're installed, the capabilities that we add, they can access uh, over time. So much like with say satellite or cable TV, right? Yeah. You get your box and you get your dish or if you have satellite and, and you get basic TV, right? Then geez, you know, it's football season. I need the red zone. Oh geez, there's a new HBO series I can't miss. Let me subscribe to HBO and oh, well, can I get Showtime with that? But you've got to base the hardware is there and the providers keep giving you more capability. Our product is very much the same. So when we launch AquaWatch, which we're doing right now, it gives you a level of capability. It lets you know if uh, anomalies are happening in the buildings, things that should not be happening. And it gives you a base level of data. Mm -hmm. But six months from now, it's gonna be able to tell you where those anomalies are happening. You know, it's not just that you've got a problem, it's on the ninth floor in suite 918, right? It's going to be able to say, um, here is comparative rich usage data, set your quotas and your goals for sustainability, and we'll let you know how close you are. So we're growing the analytical capabilities of this product over time. And as we do that, our customers have access to them. They don't change anything. They just say, yes, I want that. And we say, yes, you can have it. And, and we really haven't yet found an end of what it can do. Uh, including, you know, it's our whole technology is about fluids moving through pipes, not just water, you know, so this can ultimately ex be expanded to, you know, uh, chemicals, oil, gas, where, where leaks and things like that are devastating. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of growth that way. Uh, we're staying in the water world for the foreseeable future, but it is exciting because it's a, a platform that can grow many, many ways. You know, it grows with urban, vertical urbanization. It grows with agricultural demands. It grows with water processing, uh, you know, it, it's limitless applications, both for the product or for licensing. Wow. Uh, so I, I love you. I love your your explanation of it too. So the hardware is there now. It's just it's saying you want you want another um, another layer, another thing that you can do. I mean, I can see you're right. It's limitless. I can see that you're at, you're at, you want a new channel. Let us know. <laughs> this is it's a great concept. 
So now with uh, Aquaseca, you are you're you're transitioning from this uh, from this R and D stage where you're where you're um, where you're obviously developing the product into the sales component. Before we get into the sales component and where you're at with that, um, can you tell us just a little bit more about the R and D stage and kind of how the product was developed? Certainly. So um, you know, I, I would go back probably five years if I was looking at when we the the idea was first there, mm -hmm. and and a, a, about a year of looking at the science and what's been done uh, in the academic world. The whole concept was you could be able to stay outside of pipes. So you know, water is supposed to be inside. Aquaseca, dry. You know, we want to be dry pipes, not wet pipes. Um, <laughs> The water, you know, the water goes through the pipes and, and in a building, they, these pipes actually form sort of a waveguide through the building. I mean, mm. water makes noise, right? Water in pipes makes noise. And interestingly, every time it touches an elbow or a, a narrowing or a piece of equipment, that acoustic footprint changes. Mm. So when you can capture what is expected in a building with that footprint, then you're able to understand what's going and you're looking for anomalies. You know, like, what am I hearing that I'm not supposed to be hearing? Um, so this ability, to, this idea that you could use acoustics, but not expensive acoustics, not ultrasound and things like that, but simple little listening devices uh, on the pipes so that you could create this digital database that then you apply all of the uh, training to and the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, all of that. Uh, but the key was first you got to get that data and you've got to get it in a way you could do it. Um, so that's where we started was could you use, I will say, cheap acoustics to get rich data. And you know, a year and a half into it, we go, yeah, you can do that. So then we moved into the developing the technology, right? What kind of what kind of acoustic listening do you need? How do you get that battery life? You know, we we firmly believe these can't be plugged in, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can't. You know, where you have water, you don't always have electricity. They kind of don't even like each other much. Um, so you uh, you know you're gonna run on battery, but but how do you make that battery last three to five years, right? You don't want to be changing batteries all the time. So uh, so that was a lot of the R and D activity, and and how do you filter out ambient noise and you know, is, is how different is it in a hospital versus a commercial building? You know, how big, how, you know, how do you do it in a factory? How do you do transfer learning so that every building doesn't have to spend two or three or four weeks being learned, if you will? Uh, so a lot of that stuff around the R&D. Um, and then the last sort of phase of that was how do you make it uh, clear, not to your R&D team, who totally knows what's going on, but to those building managers that just want to look at their dashboard and say, oh, you know, I see something that I don't expect, or hey, I just got an alert and something bad's happening on the ninth floor, right? Yeah. That that that's kind of was the phase, final phase of development is is taking, you know, what is very very complicated inside in our company and making it blatantly simple, both for the install and for the data data retrieval and usage. Um, so that's kind of the path. It was it was not a short path. Went through alpha testing, beta testing, all you things, and now we're really ready. Uh, we're currently building um, and manufacturing the the commercial orders for the launch. Wow, hearing you tell that story, I'm like, uh, whenever I hear these uh, entrepreneurial stories of launching a new product and being as innovative as you are, I'm like, wow, like that was the amount of effort, the amount of hours, the amount of problems that had to be solved to make a, a viable product that would be ready for market. I mean, thousands of thousands of things. Um, I'm like, I'm sitting here and the weight of it's on me. I'm like, I'm so excited for you and for your launch that you're ready. Um, so now um, moving from R&D now to the sales portion of it, and really just to getting the product out in the market. So, so tell us a little bit more about where you're at with that and just what that looks like. Yeah, so we're focusing uh, initially on on two major segments: office buildings and multifamily. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are doing some medical and health healthcare uh, early early projects uh, at the request of the hospitals. Um, you know where there's they they have a lot of water flowing. You know, so that of course that process has not just started because through the whole development of the product, you're talking to your customers to say. What features, how do we take it to you in that? But, you know, I think the biggest thing about going commercial uh, as a startup is converting your internal mentality 
to being one of being a commercial company, mm -hmm. right? So you're not as much worrying about making this better, making this different. You're worrying about talking to your customer and making sure it's working for them. And it's a, it, it seems like a small thing, but it's a big deal. It's a big deal when you say, we stopped developing for a little while and now the customer's king. Uh, they're going to be happy. You know, we will, you know, we expect that there will be things that develop that we have to work through, you know, a building that's got some unusual, I mean, even in our alphas, we find buildings that people don't think they have any pumps running and we find them and they go, oh, whoa, we forgot about those, right? There will be those moments that we work, but, but the solution is designed for self-installation, mm -hmm. um, you know, self-maintenance and everything. So in, in, you know, as we move through this, you know, we won't always get the joy of being at our customers because, you know, they will be doing this and, and the support will be fairly remote. I, I say, we've got to develop a project where you don't have to send a ranger to every riot, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can't, you can't grow that way. You can't sustain it. And the customer doesn't want that. They want it to, you know, to be under their control. So, so those are some of the big changes. And then there's the issue of becoming the shipping clerks and the, uh, the label pasters and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> things like that. And, you know, we're not through all of that, but we're through far enough to launch and, and get business with our early customers. Man, that that is so exciting. And so, as as this expansion takes place, are there are there different geographies that you're focused on? And first, I know you said the type of of building, but um, give us a feel for that. And that's helpful, by the way. So the the customer is there; it's self run. So I'm guessing their building engineers are taking care of this, and their internal engineers are the ones installing this. Like they may do other things. Is that, am I am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's quite often the asset managers of the large property management firms, the CBREs, the JLLs, the PMRGs, all these, I mean, there's, there's lots of them that manage billions of square feet of property. Um, and then there's more the corporate side or the medical side where they're self-managing and self-own and operate their own properties. Um, and we often start at a level that's dealing with people that are concerned about the damage or the continuity of services and those types of things. But when it gets down to implementing, it's the building engineers that are already on staff. So it's not like you have to hire to do this and the whole platform from a, a desktop standpoint or a, a dashboard standpoint integrates into their current systems. So, you know, so it becomes fairly seamless. But, you know, I, I haven't really shown, but, you know, this is one of our sensors and and I must say, this is not the heart of the system. This is the data gatherer, if you will. But, you know, these are made, they, if my finger were a pipe, uh -huh. then these are just strapped onto pipes with these tie wraps. And that's what's picking up all the, the data. It's, it's acoustically coupled to the pipe. So you're hearing what's in the pipe, not other things that are going on. You know, so you can, I may not be able to get this off now, <laughs> of my finger, but um, so it's very easy to go around, you know, a hundred thousand square foot building, let's say 10 stories, 10,000 square feet. They'll install that building without shutting off the water or doing anything in about a day. So you're oh, talking wow. about a very, and, and it's while everything else is going on. Then it goes through a, a training process. Uh, probably going to be stuck with this on my finger the rest of the time. Um, they go through a training process on the building, uh, and it's about two weeks before we say, okay, we're ready to go. We understand the footprint. And now, you know, we're looking for all of these anomalies, one, and we're then providing you data on a real-time basis so that you can see where usage and all those things are. So that's awesome. And, and thank you for bringing an example, because I think you, you took the words out of my mouth. I was thinking about number one, how does, how does this thing look? And number two, how long would it take to install? But really, I mean, you're solving for um, industry-wide, you know, multi-billion dollar problem of water usage, you're, you're helping the environment. I mean, you're, you're helping with waste um, and you're solving a problem that's just going to get more expensive in the future. And you're doing it with something that like with the resources that are already on hand for these buildings, which in my, in my opinion, for the model in general, just makes it genius. If, if their engineer and their staff can do that in a day, have a training process. I mean, this is probably like easier than most of the other things they'd have to do or install. Like if there was some bit, something big operationally where you had to stop any process in the building that can take time, that can disturb tenants. But really, um, I don't know, Nancy, I feel like you made this too easy on them. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, you know, I, it, it is kind of important to understand what's happening, you know, in the building in that, 
you know, they, like I, I mentioned, these small sensors, they're, whereas most solutions out there monitor the pipe they're attached to, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, and that goes back, I spoke earlier about the coverage issue. You know, early on, we said, if we're going to use these inexpensive acoustics mm -hmm. to understand this, what we're going to do is we're going to surround the plumbing. Mm -hmm. So the sensors are dispersed around the building, wherever pipes are available. But because they corroborate data between the sensors, they're not monitoring just what they're attached to. They're monitoring all the pipes and the equipment in between. You know, so that pipe that ruptures behind the wall that nobody can see, it's being monitored. Right. It's being monitored, it, even though you're not attached to it. And and that's a very important. But that's what makes installation so simple is that you don't have to be on every pipe. You just have to be in the piping network and, you know, have sensors as as often as they need to be to be acoustically, you know, communicating with each other. Oh, that's great. Um, so now um, I know let, let, let's talk about some of the money side of things. So I know with any 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 startup, any business to grow needs needs capital, needs funding. That's uh, some of the oxygen of business. Uh, so I know you just you recently closed a small round and now you're looking at uh, at a season or excuse me, a series a round of funding. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, we just closed um, last week a a small round and um, some of our current investors, some new investors, uh, some very exciting new investors, actually. And this round is, act is what's really fueling the transition from R&D to commercial. Uh, so this is all about a, the customer acquisition and everything. And, and these investors are, you know, on really on the forefront of getting to that position. Um, later this year, we will do our A round. Uh, we will do that once we've secured the customer orders and that type of thing. And that is our true growth round. Whether it ends up being called seed round or A round, doesn't really matter. Be, be our first price round, first non-convertible note round. And, uh, and that's going to be our real growth round. That's going to be the case where we go from, you know, our a small level of sales today, you know, very rapidly to, to 10 million, you know, going on up to, you know, 80 million in four years. Um, and it's very doable. You know, I, I didn't mention before, but part of what we're offering the market to with this new technology and new solution is a SaaS-based business model. Mm -hmm. So for the building owners, there's no longer this decision about large upfront capital investment. It's a monthly operating cost, you know, and depending on the size of the building from, you know, 12 to $20 a day, you can do monitor for leaks, you can have the data for uh, you know sustainability programs. You can monitor, make sure you don't have stagnation. So it's a very very low cost because you don't have to make any upfront. You know, and as a business, we're able to do that because the heart of our system is in the cloud, right? It's our rich and it's our algorithms and our our analytics and our, if you will, digital twinning of buildings. It's all of that. You know. These inexpensive sensors are just sending the magical data up there, but that's where the heart is. So since the hardware component of our solution is is very inexpensive, it's it's very as a business, it's easy to support us a, uh, a SaaS based model. And for the building owners, it becomes a small operating expense, not a big capital investment decision. Man, that that's so exciting, Nancy. Um, and I and I'm excited to bring this story to our audience. I mean, I just think what you've done, what your team has done. I mean, you're solving you're solving a lot of problems. Number one, um, number two. I mean, we all benefit from this. From water use. I mean, I'm in California, and uh, let's just say that we have, we have our issues there, of course, <laughs> as does the rest of the nation. And and it's uh it's one of those things where you're like, if you can make some money, do good provide jobs, provide a solution that's needed and do it in the marketplace in a, in a you know, nice ethical way. I mean, there's, it's just winners all around is the way I see it. Yeah, and we are at, at least uh, at our early stages and hopefully long doing a, a made in America uh, hmm. business model, manufacturing model for our solution. Um, and, and we plan to try to sustain that, at, particularly with US customers. So, you know, there is, there is manufacturing that comes out of that. Fantastic. 
Well, Nancy, uh, I just have to say, appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about Aquaseca, the launch, where it's been, your history as an entrepreneur. I don't, I didn't forget that advice over there. Uh, you're, you're the shipping clerk, you're doing everything. I mean, uh, it's just been a, really just a pleasure talking to you. So if, if somebody's watching this right now and they want to learn more about Aquaseca, whether they're in those uh, decision-making roles at, at commercial buildings, or if they're looking at maybe investment opportunities and they want to learn more on that side of things, I mean, What's the best way for people to connect and to follow up with your team? Yeah, they, they can certainly get all our contact information from our website, which is www.aquaseca.com, which is pretty simple. Um, and, you know, directly there, you can reach out to me or anyone else on our team. Fantastic. Well, and we'll, of course, put that in the show notes. So don't worry about that. And uh, so, Nancy, really appreciate you coming on the show today. It's been a pleasure. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. Hope you learned a lot. I sure did. Um, we got a lot more mission-based entrepreneurs and companies um, on, on, on the programming for you next. Definitely hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return listener and viewer. And Nancy, uh, it really has been a pleasure. And I look forward to watching your company prosper. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for the opportunity. Really appreciate it.